Hello, welcome back. It's good to see you again. I'm your host, the Prince of Play, Solon. We last left off on Arcade Spirits. It was a very important episode. It was probably the most important episode that we've had in the entire game. And you can hear the nice somber music to be like, hey, we just achieved something. We just accomplished something. Everything up to the last episode was uh, something I called scaffolding. Things that things in story-driven games that build up uh, and need to be there so that they can start actually like telling their main point story. Um, and the scaffolding in this point came uh, from for game reasons and for story reasons. So we had to introduce our main character, Race Car Drift, and their situation. What they need to be doing, going to an arcade and doing stuff. Then we also had the heavy lifting part of introducing all of these characters who are going to be romanceable options. We've got six of them. Like we got... Um, Percy and Teo and Queen Bee, Naomi, Ashley, Gavin. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we had to spend a long time establishing all those characters, establishing the main character, their situation. And last episode was the first episode where now we get to tell stories with all of these people. And those stories can change. Um, we there's a flexibility in there and that that's a common trap that you run into with dating sims is that sometimes there'll be paths that are really well written sometimes there aren't it's not that doesn't matter what matters is the times in between any time that you find like you're on like a main path where something that is supposed to happen regardless of your character happens to you and that's what we had last episode with the kid um there might be different ways to approach that situation but I think that's a point where, regardless of choices you make, that scene is going to happen. And that scene showed us a lot of what this game is about. What Arcade Spirits is about. And we talked about at the very end of the episode yesterday that Arcade Spirits is about forming personal relationships by way of these fun little frivolous arcade machines that maybe they don't matter in the big scheme of things. But... To all of us, they matter intensely. And that's what's important. That is what brings us all together to this place. Um, and so it's really cool to see that we are here focused not on just like having fun jokes and having this quirky little dating sim going on, but like when the chips are down, when everything is like coming to a head, the focus of this is on characters. It's on building what this arcade is about the setting um and yeah so it's been like it's awesome I, I feel like everything has kind of come together in a really nice way and it's come to my main core thesis for everything that i've seen with arcade spirits everything from the arcade counter up there to um us coming back to this scene this same shot, we're going to be seeing this a lot, and that's a good thing, because that's like that's the most important place. It's not about going out and exploring a much wider world. It's about focusing is like on the minutia, the, the very small details that uh, lead us here. So, my main thesis on Arcade Spirits has been that uh, we are going to be using dating sim-like structures to explore role-playing scenarios. Uh, what This is not like uh, just a quirky dating sim where it's like, hey, let's make romantic stories. This is, we are going to use the dating sim structure where you can date six different people and we're going to use that to make like a tabletop RPG scenario. So you're gonna be uh, scored, you're gonna have multiple matrixes worth of bars to fill up um, and those bars aren't going to decide your fate as a character as much as it is like developing who you feel like you are, what kind of character you want to be. And so we haven't seen anything that would sense that that was applied. And so I'm excited to see where that goes. That's where my head's at now is we've seen everyone. We've done the dating sim parts. We've done the story building parts that you need to have in these kinds of games. And... Now, as of the last most important episode, we have seen what their focus is on, what the creators of this game, what they focused on. And that was on uh, telling 
nice stories, just just telling sweet stories, soft stories. Uh, and so now, where does that score come in that's behind us right now? Where does uh, our character go when they go home at night? Because we're at the end of a work day. When we last left off, we fixed a kid. We made them feel much better. And we also saved the arcade multiple times over just from angry moms. God, that lady did, got what she deserved. Hey, I'm not fooling myself. I haven't fixed all of Mikey's problems. I'm not a child psychologist. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants, but we put on a good show. For a moment there, I was able to help someone in the same crappy situation I found myself long ago. 15 years ago, everything changed. No more family vacations, no more arcade visits. We couldn't afford them and they couldn't take time off work. The whole Drift family had to learn to settle, to accept the lot in life we'd been dealt, to simply just go with the flow. Never hoping, never wanting. Juniper did her best to pull me out of that mire. I'd only known her for a few years, one of the few stable times in my life, but she knew the edge I'd been pushed to. Now, here I am. Today has been bonkers, alternately boring and hectic, surreal and way too real. But I can honestly say I'm more alive today than I have been in a very long time. Ice is in here like, beep beep, what's up? I told you so. Did I tell you? Did I tell you? Come on, rate my app. Rate it. Rate it right now. And you better give it five stars. <laughs> the race car. My emotional voice analysis subroutines combined with your body languages suggest you're very happy right now. Can you tell when I'm horny? Did you tell when I was horny? <sighs> hey, can you turn off biometric sensing? Thanks, Isis. I Iris. God, Iris. Not the Egyptian goddess. <laughs> Be different. Uh, hey, how did you know? Just told you, silly. I mean, how did you know I'd love this job so much? Oh, I know. Yeah. You didn't. What? What? I lied. I was 47% sure. It has elements that seem to click with your optimal social requirements. A fun atmosphere, spirited co-workers helping people out. And I cross-referenced your roommate's postings, talking about how much you enjoyed arcade visits when you were a kid. Still... 47%. 99.97%. But I was sure that if I said I was sure, you'd be willing to give it a try. <sighs> All right. You're a weird little app. Hooray! <laughs> Just keep being weird, Iris. I'm rating you five stars. I'm going to use six stars. You get a six star app rating. From the cars pulling up in the parking lot, this party is over. Just about closing time for the arcade. Anyway, most of the gamers have filed out by now if they hadn't already fled the tidal wave of kids. My first impulse is to bug Gavin about my paperwork, but uh, that can wait. I'd rather go help someone with the tidying up or maybe see how my VIP gamers are doing. Not enough time to run around checking in with everyone. Who are we hanging out with? Whoa, 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 whoa. Big choices here. Um. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of this situation. Let's get right into the exact person we want to, uh, let's, let's go to the person we want to hang out with. I've mostly seen Teo tail busting a groove on Showtime stage, but currently he's chilling with fast car fives. Hey, I'm in this game. You want to know which one I am? I'm the car. As I approach, he seems pretty relaxed, reclining back in the seat. No last dance to end the night? Ah, I've danced so much today. My legs feel like jelly, and jelly legs means I gotta rest these calves and try my hand at some of the other games. So, do you play Fast Cars 5 much? Not really. In fact, I hate driving. Since I was over there earlier, I figured I'd give it a try. And, how's my game? It's okay, I guess. Okay! <laughs> Search your heart, speed racer! It's no showtime stage, huh? Just okay? That's it? Your heart's just not in it. Mm. Give me that plus one. Give it to me, too. Give it! Hey, truth. Uh, I'll gladly remove my heart from the stage so it can belong to you. Teo! I kid. I kid. But fast cars just doesn't make my blood pump like showtime stage does. There's so little movement in a racing game. As you probably realize, dancing games differ vastly from racing games, and the communities surrounding them do too. 
Oh, we're just gonna we're gonna talk about communities. That's just what you're about, huh? All right, all of us who enjoy the same game together to play, talk, and appreciate each other's company. Our Showtime stage group meets five times a week, and it's always a blast. There's dancing, funky beats, sweating. What more could you ask for? A towel. I always bring an extra or two for newcomers. There are several gaming communities that frequent here. You'll meet them all eventually. Oh, really? That's exciting. I'm happy to report that the Funplex is one of the biggest Showtime stage communities in the country, but don't you worry, we aren't a rowdy bunch. Okay, so Teo's route, we're gonna be talking about community. I'm really excited about this, because every arcade game has different communities because the, the internet happened. Um, and there's even like sub-communities for different rhythm games. There's uh, Japanese rhythm games that are not dancing related. And there's a big community for those. There's uh, the dancing rhythm game community is a huge community. And there's also even um, like kind of a retro modding game enthusiast community that's about the hardware. And so that gets into even weirder things like not only DDR pads, but also like Guitar Hero controllers and it gets into like a whole set of stuff. So yeah, rhythm game communities are like a whole a whole bunch of things. And most of them, if not all of them, center around the arcade. And yeah, that's cool as hell. I'm glad that we get a, if if we're hanging out with Teo. His thing must be about uh, organizing communities and, and what that means to be groups with in groups with people. Which is going to be good for Race Car Drift. This will be really good for Race Car Drift because he's a loner. And so we're going to fix him. Alright. My boys are a little rowdy. If you ever need us to settle down, just ask. I'll be your genie. Your wish is my command. Right now, all I wish is for a nice hot bath and a long sit in my favorite comfy chair, and I'm pooped. Ah, you were in a nice relaxing evening. From what I saw, you worked your buns off. Thank you, I just hope my buns are still firmly attached. I don't know what I'd do if I lost my buns! I'm sure they'll show up behind you, but if you ever decide you need to shake those buns, join me up on the Showtime stage. Maybe one day. I'll hold you to that race car. Anyway, it's been real. I need to consume some food before I fall over. I'll catch you on the flip side. Teo jumps out of the fast car's five console and smiles to me as he wanders his way out of the funplex. With things winding down, there's just one thing to take care of before I'm out the door. I seek to out Gavin to handle the remains of the day. Race car. Good work today. Thanks, boss. Mid boss. Sub boss. Gavin will do. Hmm. Can't say you've been a perfect employee, but my standards are impossibly high. So I'll just assume you're as close as perfect as is reasonable. I'm not entirely sure why you consulted Percy regarding those tickets. He's not on staff, but I suppose that's a minor issue. Normally I'd have to dealt with angry parents myself, but I was distracted. I have only second-hand accounts of your performance there, but... Hmm... Allowing Queen Bee to yell at the customers is questionable at best. She's volatile, and I'd rather you have handled that on your own, all told. I bet, you know what that's gonna affect? That guy. The big one-up score. I bet there's a whole extra side of this, the, the third secret matrix behind these two is taking care of the funplex. Okay. Um, I'll take that to mean... <laughs> I'll take that to mean um, that we also have a priority to take care of the Funplex. I wonder if there's a way, if there's like a whole route of taking it, care of it as poorly as possible. I'm not pleased that you sold our Moopy for only a thousand dollars and not three thousand as I'd requested. Gavin, we only paid two hundred bucks for that game. I'd be ripping off a customer. A customer with exceptionally deep pockets and one who squats on that game all day, spending only a handful of change in the process. If anything, 3000 is what we'd need to make up the lost profit from Mer Percy being so moopy obsessed. What's more, why it's still here is a good question. Was I not clear I wanted it gone? Percy didn't want to break up the family. They're machines, not people. He also didn't want Naomi to be sad. Well, Naomi needs to learn to let go, I'd say. <laughs> Chill, dog! 
Don't go breathing down my neck about this. Ahem. Are you giving our poor little race car a hard time, Gavin, dear? Miss Francine, I thought you were napping. Let's be sensible. Naomi's dreams matter too. As does the dreams of Percy, that poor fellow. But Percy's stinking rich. How could Percy possibly have any problems? Everyone I wonder. Has a dream they're chasing. Maybe it's because, you know, day trading is kind of an empty, hollow profession. I'm just saying, I know you mean well, want to keep everyone's dreams afloat, but sacrifice is made in that name, which shatters the dreams of others. Well, that's not what the Funplex is all about. Race car, you understand, yes? The reason why? Why am I here? That's the question she asked me during that interview. I think I understand. I'm here today because I need to take risks. I've been mired in the muck for years now, just taking taking what I can get out just taking what I can get out of life, going with the flow. I look around and I see all sorts of risk takers. People chasing hopes and dreams without compromise, without looking back. Naomi, Percy, Queen Bee, Teo, Ashley, and Gavin! You know we're better than this. We don't settle. We fight. We chase after our hopes and dreams and cower before taking a chance. And we don't take the safe option. That's what I've been doing. I've got you, race car. We figured out your dream. We were right. That's got to be coming from the star in the heart behind me. Our dream must have changed because of uh, our personality matrix. Is what I would guess. I'm hoping. Maybe it's not. Maybe it isn't. But I know that I have not been taking the safe option on all of these choices. So I'm feeling really validated right about now. The the whole tabletop role playing conceit is uh, working. It's working really well. Apologies. Character first, as opposed to what a lot of the philosophies around dating sims are, and that's route first. Route first style of game design. Uh, they want this to be character first. And then, the dating routes. Race car, Miss Francine, I apologize. It's difficult to balance my idealism against my realism some days, but I know in my heart I need to err on the side of idealism, even if my mind screams in protest. I can assume that you are still keen to work here, race car. I wonder if who we hang out here changes based on what we go with, because our rash, bold decision-making is uh, foiled, the opposite of that would be Gavin's more balanced decision making. So if we were less, if we were more balanced like Gavin, would uh, we be talking to like Naomi or something instead? Someone who's more passion driven? All right, absolutely. All right, cool. Gavin fetches a nearby short stack of forms. Fill these out tonight. Hand them in to me first thing in the morning. And welcome to the Funplex. Welcome to the family, I'd say. I'm sure you'll fit in just fine, race car. Wow, wow, wow. Ah, one bus ride later and it's home again. Home again, jiggity jig. Joan, Joan, I did a work. I did a go, I did a whole work thing. I did a work. Job, job, Juniper, Juniper, job. Juniper, already home from work, bounds over eagerly to interrogate me on in my day. How was it? How'd it go? I mean, you didn't even know I went to a job interview today. You, I just was gone all day. Well, or well, really well. Your little laugh came through, despite being terrifyingly omniscient and just a little bit unnerving. And adorable. That's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear things worked out. You even came home with a smile like when you were a lifeguard. I guess I am smiling, interesting. Hmm. By the way, there's just one teensy weensy little question I have for you. Why exactly did you order a giant crate full of pizza bagels? That is a lot of... Ah! The pizzas! The pizza bagels are here! Did I neglect to mention the part of the terms and conditions? Well, I guess we're just eating pizza bagels. Oh! Pizza bagels are like my least favorite of frozen fake dinner entrees. Pizza rolls, taquitos. That's the that's the highest level, the highest form of life, is the rolled taquito. Just meats inside of a tortilla. That's level one of arcade spirits complete. Hey, wow, that was it. 
you know, I want, you want a prize. You'll get one of these for each level you clear, plus some extras for various endings and other hidden things. Wow, okay. You're on Queen Bee's good side. Beats being on her bad side. You're proven to be a gentle, sweet, and compassionate soul. Also, you've scored 6,000 points. Keep talking with people and your score will go up, up, up. Today's pizza fact. Americans eat approximately 100 acres of pizza each day, or 350 slices per second. I want to eat 350 slices of pizza per second. That sounds fun. Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level 2? Save the game. Yeah. Okay. We're on to level two. Weird. Oh, that's awesome. I love that it's kind of an episodic style. That really helps control your uh, your building out of the game. Uh, whenever I do written text-based games, I always try to make sure like, all right, what is our benchmarks? What are we trying to hit? And then we'll let players make choices between those, but we always come back to part two, part three, part four, uh, whenever I'm working with my students too, that's what we do. Our, our newest game that we're working on does the exact same thing, where it's like, all right, this is what chapter one's about, this is what chapter two's about, chapter three, chapter four, and then we're done. That's it. We gotta get from here to there. How are we gonna do that? Well, let's make some paths. Let's make some paths that all end up getting back to here. And so, it's fun, fun storytelling stuff that makes your life so much easier in the long run. As opposed to, you know, uh, our normal dating sims, what we know is you have like a big hub of stuff, just a chunk of stuff that happens and a bazillion choices are made in there and then boom, you're down that path, boom, you're down that path, boom, you're down that path and like maybe none of them come together at the end and that's totally fine. It just makes a different type of story. The downside of this type of storytelling is that means you can't have radically different endings. Uh, like Amnesia Memories that we've played on the channel goes way out of its way to do a lot of different things. This, it's like, all right, we're gonna stay focused at certain points. But everything that happens in between those points is we can do whatever we want, you know? So it's cool. It's the future. It's the year 20XDX. You know what? Things are pretty okay. I've worked as a floor attendant at the Funplex for two weeks now. Hard work to be sure, but rewarding in a spiritual sense. I've helped Naomi repair pinball games, I've had tea with Francine while she reminisced about the far-off 1960Xs, and I've evacuated gamers when the kitchen had accidentally caught on fire. I've had numerous kids puking up notches on my clothes, I've scraped gum off of any number of surfaces. We are ready now. We know... We know the gig. We're practically veterans two weeks in. Sorry, it's, it's uh, not a rosy picture so far, but honestly, I'm happy. I'm happy even amidst the chaos and the grossness. So it's been two weeks. And we're going to be hanging out with Queen Bee. I guess uh, choosing her side instead of Teo's was a huge kicker. It's the best I've seen you in ages, race car. Hey, Juniper, welcome to my workplace. Usually I'd come home all drained and exhausted, but I'm still tired, but like good tired. Juniper took to stopping by during my her lunch break, whenever she could get away from her office cubicle long enough to do so. Yeah, this would be a fun place for you to hang out with, right? Still hard work, but uh, overall, it's good work. I feel I, I just feel good, like good and stuff. Yes. I feel very validated here. Agreed, super good. Double plus good. All right, we talked about you listening to my conversations. Why did I tell you about that? To pretend I wasn't eavesdropping even when I am. Exactly. You know, I'd be more upset about the creepy privacy invading digital over mistress, but Iris has really pulled through for me even if she ordered a three-month supply of pizza bagels on my behalf. You have pizza on a bagel. <sighs> so, Juniper, how long do you have left on your break? Any time to squeeze in some pinball or something? I can spy you some tokens. No can do! Our new assistant synergy manager arranged a team-building exercise. I have to, like, move colored bits of paper around or something and then exchange high fives. Assistant synergy manager. That sounds vague. It's actually entry level. Good pay and right on track to middle management. Bit cushy if a bit dull. Funny thing is that they asked me if I knew anybody who fit before they started advertising for candidates and I said, nope, who'd want to do that? When was this? Oh, two weeks ago.
right, when I needed to find work. You told them you didn't know any good candidates for a well-paying entry-level job? Well, uh... You know, I, mean... I... I wouldn't have liked being an assistant synergy manager, right? Not one bit. We were there. We didn't like it. That was the <laughs> ending that we got at the beginning of the game. <sighs> please told you. T please tell me you told them no because I'd already taken this job by that point, not because you forgot. Hey, I didn't forget. I just, you know, didn't bother telling you about the open position that night. You'd already had so many jobs you hated. I knew you'd hate being assistant synergy manager, so I didn't need to tell you. It worked out, right? You spent the last five minutes telling me how happy you are here. Right? Um, but this doesn't really have a future to it. Does it? I don't know. Also not a lie, having packed pizza bagels for lunch after having pizza bagels for breakfast because we barely had enough money to cover the rent this week, pulled together. Not a lie, I, Gavin constantly hiding the numbers from us, insisting things were fine while all dryly joking about perpetually being on the edge of crash and burn. <sighs> this is also not a lie, that every time someone in my family tried to chase that after happiness instead of stability, we fell deeper and deeper into debt and misery. Ooh. Sorry, I'm spiraling over here. I shouldn't feel angry, she stood by me for years supporting me, trying to do what's best for me, even if she wasn't always skilled at that sort of support. I shouldn't feel upset, I'm genuinely enjoying my time at Funplex. I took a risk and it paid off in terms of my mental health, but not my physical health. I don't have a right to be angry or upset at losing an opportunity to a safer, more stable future, right? <sighs> We're gonna lie to protect Juniper? Harsh truth. <sighs> Harsh truths, honestly, they, they don't get you anywhere except for farther down in your own self like just in your head more you just start trying to prove to yourself that you are more right than rea than the world is around you and sometimes we can tell ourselves little lies that are actually more truths that help push us further forward and the truth is the biggest truth of them all is that I can't leave here that job's not there this is where I am things are stable here it might not be the best job, but and it might not have like even somewhere forward to go from, but this is where we are. It's it's not even settling as much as it is accepting the reality around you. Uh, so this is the honest truth. So I'm just gonna make the, the very easy choice that like, hey, it's simple as that. This is where we're at. And this is a different life than that person's life was. And also we've seen that life and uh, it doesn't have cute boys and girls in it, so, like, it wasn't even worth animating. <laughs> That's how bad it was. I'm done compromising, done with settling, going with the flow. I'm gonna be the one to break the family curse. I chose this path of my own free will, even if I didn't have all the facts at the time. If I'm gonna be honest, boundless confidence doesn't cover the simple fact that I chose to be vulnerable rather than safe. If the arcade closes, if anything else goes wrong, Still, there's no need to dump all that on Juniper. It's okay, Juniper, you were right. I'd have hated that job, and things are great here. Okay, sorry. Uh, you were freaking me out, race car. Trust me, it's the right decision. You'd learn to loathe working at my office like I do. I mean, sure, the pay is good, you get health insurance and paid vacation time, and they have a sweet coffee shop in the lobby. And those really great chairs that support your lower back, like thousand dollar chairs from Sweden, crafted by master chairsmiths. Juniper, everything is fine. Honestly, I'm okay. I mean, I won't deny the job would have been a safer bet. I want to contribute my fair share to the apartment rent, you know? But what's done is done. I'd rather look forward than back. Sorry, forget I said anything. Please forget. I, I'm sorry. I should have told you. I shouldn't have held back. I still wouldn't have pushed you to take the job. It's totally horrible at my office and you'd have been miserable. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I got a bad feeling. I've got a good feeling about this. I think you're right where you need to be. Even though I was kind of dumb. Uh, hey, I gotta get back to the office. Have a good lunch, okay? I can hear the frozen bucks of pizza bagels taunting me from the recently repaired employee break room. Remember when the kitchen was on fire? That happened in some text. Okay, you have a good rest of the hours of your day. Everything's fine. I'm okay with this, right? Right? What I need is a distraction, and frozen pizza. I need not frozen pizza bagels, I, I need uh, to get some food. Let's treat yourself. 
Hey, maybe some company too. Hey, let's go hang out with some friends, huh? Maybe next time? Next time we're gonna go hang out with some friends? Thank you for hanging out with me today. And tomorrow on Arcade Spirits, the next time that we get to be together, we are, we've got a lot of choices ahead of us. I'm really glad that we got a nice moment with Juniper to break down like, are things okay? Are, are we good? We had a roommate talk. I love roommate talks. I've, I've had roommates um, ever since leaving my parents' house. And so I've always lived with some other group of people all, at all times. I don't know what it would be like to not be sharing rent with other people. Um, but so I've always been in that kind of like space. And so it's like, yeah, yeah, no, this is this is exactly the kind of talks. We'll go in circles for 20, 30 minutes like, hey, are we in the right place in our lives? Are we in the right place in our lives? Yes, yes. The answer is always things are fine. If things weren't fine, we'd go look for something else. And we're not even at that point yet. Things Things are okay. And the moment they stop being, we are looking for something else. It, that's the what you have to do. Um, so yeah, no, oh, very relatable, very fun. And God, yeah, the between last episode and this one, we are like firmly in the place of we are telling a serialized story by way of the mechanics of a dating sim, but with the philosophy of a tabletop role-playing game. We are uh, not just going into like encounter type scenarios, but we're forming bonds with other characters that change and strengthen how we approach those encounters, like the birthday party, for example. Um, it's been really cool. And uh, I think that all of that helped change our resolution, which was the conclusion with Gavin at the end of episode one or chapter one or, or level one, as this game calls it. Like, yeah, we're right in there in full, full course, tabletop role playing style philosophy of uh, having like a controller that is is building your story as you make your choices through it. Like it's it's awesome. It's really cool seeing a story being told this way It's really inspiring. I hope that you guys are seeing that, too. Anyway, that's my game talks today. I'll see you next time for more Soul and Face and more for Arcade Spirits.